you probably are aware of ways of expanding QRadar's uh, interface. Uh, for example, we have shown videos in this channel about the RESTful API, which allows bidirectional communication to the asset database, uh, rules, etc. We have shown examples of playing with uh, reference sets. Uh, and basically, this uh, facilitates all the usage of the XML between the communication of QRadar and other systems. You also have seen uh, how we use custom properties. And this is uh, a mechanism by which we can extract specific fields from the logs of some applications that are, you know, either not uh, gathered by curator or, or is something specific that you want to actually use for some uh, specific searches or you want to create actually rules based on the values of those uh, fields on the logs. And for this, you need to know uh, regex uh, in order to match what you are looking for. Uh, we also show a video of uh, how to use reference sets for uh, doing a mapping between a user ID, which is what curator sees from the, uh, from the queue flow, from the content of the package, and, and to get the actual full name of the individual. I mean, those uh, user IDs can be very uh, cryptic. Also, when you are playing with curator, there are other tools that you also use, and, and you may find yourself jumping to other uh, tools. Let's say that you also use for threat intelligence things like uh, uh, Bridgepoint or Exabin or Threat Systems, anything like that. So you need to switch back and forth between the two tools. Also, these interface enhancements are kind of restricted to leave and stay within the curator's uh, own UI. And this. Uh, it's been fine, in fact, uh, the RESTful API has been ex ex enhanced and you can still do custom properties and play with, uh, with reference sets. But these tools are kind of uh, more on the programming side and, and we all know how to do programming in this field, but we prefer to stay more focused on the uh, investigating the actual uh, threats. In Curator 7.6, now with the application exchange, now you can easily install apps that insert things like new tabs or a full dashboard or uh, add buttons. We're going to show examples of these or even, you know, modify the workflow and add pieces uh, to the actual workflow. Uh, you can add full new views that allows you to get into uh, other tools uh, and therefore expanding the, the, the curator uh, UI tremendously. Now, with custom properties, you can actually import them from the app exchange. So all you need to do is download them. It's a zip file. You actually install it and uh, you can put that keep that book of about regular expression on the shelf because you don't actually need it. There's also one app that is an LDAP interface, so you no longer have to play with uh, reference sets to keep uh, synchronization between the user IDs and, and the actual full names and because this, this application can actually do that. And this application can even do far more. I mean, these are the first versions of it, but it can actually produce reports. It can actually execute historical correlation. Uh, it can actually uh, generate custom rules. Uh, uh, there are new right-click options that you can actually uh, use. You can actually launch uh, a shell script from, from the right-click uh, menu. Uh, and you can actually write these. You no longer are restricted to only use Java. And no longer you have to stop Curator to actually incorporate any of these uh, applications at all. There's also an, an interface with uh, Stick and Taxi. And, on, on Curator. And all these applications are reviewed and certified by uh, IBM. How do you get access to those? Well, you go into the admin tab in 726 and there is this new field called Extension Manager. And in it, you can actually, here you can see that we have actually two of those applications. Uh, we're going to show you uh, one of them uh, 
shortly. But you can actually click on this link, which is the uh, IBM Security App Exchange, which is part of the X4 Exchange, and uh, look at the URL there. Uh, so you can actually uh, register yourself. It's, uh, it's free for you to uh, uh, go there and get a lot of threat intelligence. But if you click on this menu, actually, you get to see all the act actual application that exists. And there's a bunch of them. We're going to be reviewing uh, many of them in, in, in more detail in a minute. Uh, but uh, what all you need to do is actually click on, on the ones, like I did for this uh, incident overview, download the actual zip file, and actually uh, go back into that menu and uh, point to that wherever you put that file, and voila, you, you have that application actually installed. So several of these, like uh, this Bit9 of FireEye, for example, in FireEye you can get uh, what uh, file hashes uh, from it. Uh, from Guardian, you can get database names. As, uh, from uh, ZOS, you can get job numbers. Uh, uh, from uh, Stellbit, you can get distinguished name. Things that you, you will have to go ahead and, and do your own regex to find this. No need to. You just import this, and now you have the, uh, those uh, available. This one from Resilient, for example, allows you to actually insert into curators uh, offense management, this button in here uh, that allows you to actually open a ticket right there into the resilient application. This one from Exabin is actually quite interesting uh, because it allows you, not, not only Exabin has the capability of uh, getting feed logs from, from Curator and use it for the analysis uh, of the what it does very good, which is user behavior. They take when a user behavior, for example, is using a service account or you know, detecting those type of anomalies, but also can give you uh, on this tab that we see here, uh, you can actually get a view into the actually Exabin tool and see uh, this uh, classification of uh, specific uh, users. Here's another example of another threat intelligence tool like uh, Brightpoint, which allows you to actually, again, by a tab, you get into the actual tool itself to do that uh, that analysis uh, into that tool without having to switch uh, physically and leave uh, the curator console. There are very many more applications. You can actually explore them and see uh, for yourself. And, and this keeps uh, updating as more people add more uh, application into it. And here is the LDAP application I was re uh, referring to. Uh, before, but let's let's see. Uh, I already installed the incident overview application in, into into the into my uh, demo system. After installing that application, it actually puts this icon in here into the offenses tab. And when I click into that link, I get a view this uh, different view of all the uh, uh, different offenses. Uh, with their uh, magnitude and, and color and all that uh, good stuff and I can actually uh, click on it and then I get more information about it and if these are actually internal uh, addresses uh, but if they were international addresses you can actually see the links between the different countries involved into here and actually you can uh, from it uh, click on it and then go into the traditional view and to see that particular offense uh, number 90 and, and do the normal investigation you normally do with curator.